Now here's my large quadcopter I built. Um, this was the very first um, multi-rotor I ever made. And this is the, the giant hex copter here that I'm working on so you can see kind of what it looks like on the floor. Um, there's the 450, the DJI 450 next to the this big quad. Now this being the first multi-rotor I ever built, I made a, a few mistakes and uh, this one has too big of a landing gear and battery mount and the uh, the boom coming out the front for the camera. It did fly but it could only fly for about uh, between two and three minutes with uh, as you can see this is the way I have it right here with a 3-4S batteries. Now the way I had it arranged I had the Hoverfly Pro on this one and I had two separate voltage systems. One ran the uh, the Hoverfly Pro with a 3 cell and then the other part of it was uh, that ran the ESCs was um, the 4 cell batteries and I really underestimated um, a lot of things about this. I thought it would fly a little bit longer but you know when you're brand new you never did it before that's the way it turned out and I'll throw up a quick, uh, a quick clip on this thing flying so you guys can see it. It's got 3548 motors. Um, they're pretty big. They're uh, not too much smaller than the uh, the 5055. So the 5055 has uh, uses about 80 amps, and these ones here, full peg, are about 60 amps. Now the ESCs on the quad are um, 60 amp ESCs, and they can handle 6S batteries. Um, I, the other battery I have is down below inside the uh, camera boom and that this one here fed up this way and it's going to be similar on the, the, the giant hex copter. It's going to have a separate power going to the, the Hoverfly Pro also to run that. And I've got a little switch off to the side where I have to plug the battery in and then turn on the Hoverfly Pro at almost the exact same time so it could coordinate with the ESCs. Now here's the, the battery or the, the power distribution center on the bottom of the big quad. As you can see I, uh, I did this from like um, videos I saw a couple years ago um, you know when they were putting together the Hoverfly Pro or like a year and a half ago and I'm gonna try and get away from this. I don't it's kind of messy down underneath here it's it's kind of uh, too heavy um, there's a lot of copper there in the center is uh, 10 gauge it branches out to 12 gauge to go to feed the ESC's coming out and I'm gonna try and get away from this on the on the giant hex I'm gonna do a little bit different now this is the way that the um, the power distribution uh, board is starting to shape up um, you can see my leads these are for the power leads going to the ESC's for the motors and now the ones going out to the front and rear are for to feed our battery power in uh, to the power distribution board. Now I do have two smaller wires uh, right here that come out of the ends that will be operating different things on the copter if I decide to put um, a voltage regulator or something like that in. Now I did this by taking a piece of copper water pipe and drilled the sides. I put my wire leads in and then I used um, a brazing torch here to um, braze and solder in the, the solder for this heavy 10 gauge wiring. Now I tried a little bit with electric solder, soldering iron but it, it just isn't strong enough. Um, the 10 gauge is just too heavy for it and it cools off too quick but the uh, torch seemed to work out pretty well. Now my next step is to take this circuit board and I'm going to laminate this um, piece right here in between two pieces of the circuit board and then this will sit down inside the frame and that will give us room um, just to put the Hoverfly Pro in over the top of it. So.